Okay, so we have a nice short lecture on nosocomial and opportunistic infections. So you all know that the host has defenses against disease. We have numerous things that allow us to stay healthy and usually these defenses are perfectly fine unless we get sick, immunocompromised, have some sort of illness that might affect the way our host defenses react against an infection. So our commensal flora, our commensal flora can cause disease. So even though they're normal flora, they're in our body, usually we need our normal flora, there are instances where this normal flora will cause disease. So they can cause disease when their habitat is damaged, disturbed, or changed, or more commonly when the host immune system is weakened or compromised in any way. So our host immune system can be compromised by immunosuppressive therapy. So let's say you have an autoimmune disease, so you have to take immunosuppressive drugs, or if someone's getting a, an organ transplant, they have to take immunosuppressive drugs. An individual on chemotherapy, say someone with cancer, has to take chemotherapy, which not only damages the cancerous cells, but it damages all of the healthy cells as well an individual that's undergoing radiation. So there's many instances, also diseases, a lot of diseases cause immunodeficiency. The one major one is the HIV virus. So our normal flora can either initiate an infection, which usually is when our host immune system is compromised in some way, or our normal flora might make an infection more serious in a patient that has a chronic illness and chronic illnesses that might make someone more at risk for having disease caused by their normal flora would be somebody with diabetes or someone with cirrhosis. So a nosocomial infection is an infection that occurs during a hospital-based stay that was neither present nor in the prodromal or incubation state when the patient entered into the hospital. So there's 1.75 to 3 million nosocomial infections per year, and the treatment of nosocomial infections adds between 4.5 to $15 billion annually. Each nosocomial infection adds between five to 10 days to that individual's hospital stay. And of the patients with blood or lung infections, 40 to 60% die annually from nosocomial infections. So the large tertiary care hospitals that treat very seriously ill patients do have higher rates of nosocomial infections because they have a very high risk population in the hospital. People in ICU, people with serious diseases. So the risks of nosocomial infections, there is a difference based on the severity of the illness that the patient has the frequency of invasive diagnostic and therapeutic procedures, as well as the effectiveness of the infection control program. So the various types of nosocomial infections and the common pathogens involved in causing those infections. So urinary tract infections. 33% of all nosocomial infections are urinary tract infections. So that's a high percentage. And by, for, by far, Escherichia coli is the most common cause of nosocomially acquired urinary tract infection. Lung infections are 15% of all nosocomial infections. Risk factors of a nosocomial lung infection are advanced age, a chronic lung disease such as COPD, which is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, 
large volume aspiration, chest surgery, intracranial pressure monitoring devices, being in the intensive care unit, and being intubated. And the most common organisms causing pneumonia, nosocomial pneumonia, are the gram-negative rods, and those are common, commonly a cause of aspiration pneumonia, Staphylococcus aureus, and Moraxella cateralis. Surgical site infections are 15% of all nosocomial infections. The most common agents are gram-positive organisms, including Staphylococcus aureus and coag-negative staph, as well as Enterococcus, your gram-negative rods, and your yeast candida. Risk factors for surgical site nosocomial infections are advanced age, obesity, infection at a remote site, being malnutritioned, having diabetes, having an extended preoperative stay. So if you go to the hospital for numerous days before your, your surgery and having an extended surgery time. Bloodstream infections are 13% of all nosocomial infections, and the risk factors are aged one year or less or 60 years and older, being malnutritioned, having immunosuppressive chemotherapy, a loss of skin integrity, such as a burn victim, having burns or bed sores, having a severe underlying illness, having an indwelling device such as a catheter, being in the intensive care unit, and having a prolonged hospital stay. So nosocomial transmission, you could have direct transmission through contaminated food or contaminated intravenous solutions. You could have indirect transmission. This would be from patient to patient through hand contact. Droplet aerosols, so inhalation of droplets. Usually these droplets can't travel very far. So it usually is, you have to be within the same room as a patient to transmit something through via droplet aerosol. So droplet aerosol are, um, droplets that are greater than five micrometers in diameter and they don't travel any lo longer than three feet. However, airborne transmission, inhalation of droplets, these are smaller droplets, less than or equal to five micrometers and that they can travel longer distances. And an example of airborne transmission would be mycobacterium tuberculosis. Also, vector-borne. You can have insects, there could be rats, and this is a rare mode of nosocomial infections in developed countries, but it is much more common in developing countries. So antibiotic resistance is a serious problem, especially in the nosocomial setting. So nosocomial infections have changed because of overuse of antibiotics. Patients are taking antibiotics in the hospital many times, so that changes their normal flora. And so then they can become colonized with resistant organisms because they're taking antibiotics, they're ill to begin with, their, their, their normal flora can mutate, any infection that they might have can become resistant to those antibiotics, so then those resistant organisms then can be transmitted to a susceptible patient in the hospital and then that patient becomes infected with an antibiotic resistant organism. If a patient goes from a hospital to the nursing home, again those resistant organisms that they might be harboring can then be transferred to other nursing home patients who are highly susceptible to infection. So risk factors for acquiring a highly drug-resistant organism include prolonged hospitalization as well as having prior antibiotic treatment. To prevent nosocomial infections, of course, the best way is to wash hands very often wash hands with soap between patient contact. 
segregating any infected patients, especially patients with an antibiotic resistant organism, wearing masks, gowns, and gloves for, especially if someone's infected with a highly transmissible organism, bagging any contaminated articles in a hospital room, cleaning the room thoroughly after the patient is discharged, and placing instructions on the patient doors. And nowadays there's, you know, antimicrobial foams and sprays in every hospital room and the hallways to try to reduce nosocomial infections.